If you like this video and channel, click on the like button and subscribe button. Also, if you want to have notification when new video released, click on the notified button. Hello, welcome in video where you can see what is IO device and how to create from your spare PLC IO device in your project. Okay, we have two PLCs. One is CPU 317 and second is CPU 1215. This PLC we use as IO device and this PAC PLC we use as IO controller. Okay, <coughs> we go to the device and networks, also known as hardware configuration. And now we create something like that. This PLC we use something like as something like 8 AT device for this PLC. This will be master, this will be something like spare. Okay, we go to the options of the spare PLC, <coughs> go to the properties, sorry. Okay, and here in Profinet interface options and in the operating mode, you can set this PLC as IO device. Okay, we just need to click on this checkbox IO device and as the controller of, the, of this IO device will be our PLC S7317. Okay. <coughs> For this PLC, you need to define the transfer areas between IO controller and IO device. Okay, first we create for this example, we create two transfer transfer areas. One will be output from IO controller and second input for IO controller. <coughs> okay. This arrows arrows is show in which direction we want to send the data. When we want to use transfer area outputs from IO controller, this mean we from the IO controller send the data into EO device. Okay, for this we define address 100 for each other. And for this example, we use only land of one byte. Okay, when we want the input for IO controller, this mean we send from the IO device data to the IO controller. We just click here and change the direction of the arrow. And this mean <coughs> The inputs of IO device is this. We send by the imaginary outputs to the IO controller, and here on the outputs of IO device, we send the data from the IO controller by this address. Okay. You will see how it works because this is a little bit not good how to explain it. Okay, this is how to set your IO device. Okay, that's all for the configuration in the hardware. And now we can go to the software. First, we go to the IO device. Okay. As first, we use network number one for as outputs from IO 
controller and second network we use for inputs to IO controller okay we go to the instruction and for this we use move instruction and now we have imaginary inputs sorry imaginary inputs from the our definition of the transfer area is that this one so here from the byte number 100 we send all data from the IO controller <coughs> to our output of the IO device PLC this are on the address 0 you can see your address is here in the device overview and here you, here you can see input and output of the PLC are at the address start at the address 0 in this example we use only first byte of this output inputs and also here <coughs> we send the inputs inputs of the IO device to the IO controller <coughs> inputs are also in the zero byte okay and we send the inputs of the IO device to the IO controller <coughs> by the imaginary outputs of the PLC of the IO device PLC and these are wait these are this one this mean by the imaginary output 100 we send the data of the IO device inputs to the IO controller on the on the address of imaginary inputs in the IO controller 100 <coughs> okay for this we use op. yes I have predefined uh, the <coughs> name of tax before creating the video Okay, for this we can save the project and now we can go to the IO controller and define the addresses where we receive the imaginary outputs of the IO device and the imaginary inputs of IO device. Okay, first network we use as an input from IO sorry inputs from IO device and set set network 2 is outputs for IO device <coughs> okay for inputs from IO device, we use the imaginary outputs, imaginary inputs of the IO controller. These inputs we define as <coughs> here imaginary inputs on address 100. Okay, go back to the network and insert here imaginary inputs. And for example, these inputs we we save, we move to our 
tag for example I create tag inputs of IO device and as the, for the output for IO device this means we want to set some output on the IO device from the IO controller for this we also create some tag for this is output of IO device Merker byte on address 100 and this information we send we move to the imaginary output of the control device of the IO controller on the address of the output 100 <coughs> this means on this address we send on these imaginary outputs we send our information which output we want to set or reset on the IO device okay this is output 100 here you can see it from the output 100 we send the information to the IO device on the address input 100 and here is input 100 and we this information from the IO controller directly move to the outputs or on the hardware out outputs of the IO device and same all inputs from IO device we send to the imaginary output of the IO device and this imaginary output of IO device QB100 are sent to imaginary inputs of the IO controller and we read these imaginary inputs of IO controller in our program and save or move this data this input from IO device to our tag of the IO controller <coughs> and that's all now we can try it I'm just check if everything is okay 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 and now we can download the changes into PLCs first we load changes to the IO controller hardware and software okay load the changes and start module finish and a second we load the changes to the IO device load finish okay and now we can go online okay 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 now we are online and we try to set the first three outputs of the IO device by the information from the IO controller this is IO device how you can see CPU 1215 and now by the imaginary output of the controller IO controller <coughs> we set the three outputs of the IO device okay we set the output of IO device variable we use extra number seven this mean we want to set first free output of the IO device okay we move this information to imaginary outputs and this outputs receive the IO device on the imaginary inputs and how you can see we move this imaginary inputs to the hardware output of the IO device how you can see this is IO device and now we check by the watch table if we receive this information and we set the output yes how you can see we set the hardware outputs 
<coughs> sorry, the hardware outputs of the IO device to true. Okay, for example, now we try to set only first output. This means we in the IO controller <coughs> move information about say set first output of the IO device to true by the imaginary outputs and in the IO controller we receive this information and move it to the hardware outputs variables tags to the hardware outputs byte and how you can see okay the hardware output number one is set to true same we can try to move the inputs of the PLC of the IO device to the IO controller but for this I use some new tech because I don't have how to set the hardware out input of the IO device for example simulation inputs okay define tech as a global memory for example 200 is fine download the changes to the IO device load okay and now for example I send I don't know hexadecimal number again seven this mean I have I have my first three inputs of the IO device are set to true and this information I move to the imaginary outputs of the IO device and this information of the IO device I receive in the IO controller and I see on the IO device are set first three inputs for example I don't know I changed to decimal is the same okay and okay this is how you can uh, use the operating modes of your peers of your PLC as the, as the IO controller or the IO device and this you can use as this you can use if, if you want to have from your PLC from your spare PLC something like ET at a, at a 200 for example but for this you use the PLC okay thank you for watching this video and goodbye